So today I want to talk to you about hypernourishment, why it's important, and four tricks to to do it, like how to actually do this, how to practically, like what to do, like how do you change your diet. What is hypernourishment? So hypernourishment is following these principles of understanding that healing itself is is an energy. It's a uh, it's something that already exists. Okay, it's it's a part of nature. It's a part of the world. It already exists. You don't have to invent it. You don't have to, you, you just have to find it and you have to tune into it. And healing is a couple of things. So healing is, I find healing is gentle. It's soft, it's kind, it's, it's patient, but it's also abundant. Healing is an abundant energy. So the opposite of abundance is restriction. So restriction is, is, is not healing and abundance is. So abundance is healing. And what we're trying to achieve in, in a hypernourishment situation is a state of abundance that is that is correlated with, that is a manifestation of healing. Here, Corin says, eat ice cream and pumpkin pie. These are some great options. We'll talk about these. So you say that maybe maybe as a joke, maybe not. I'm not sure, but we'll, we'll talk about that. So healing already exists. You don't have to invent it. You just have to find it. You know, a bunch of people have healed already. I've healed, seen lots of other people heal. You don't have to invent it. You just have to find it for yourself. And healing has certain traces, it has certain elements, and one of these is abundance. So we're gonna try and incorporate this aspect of abundance into the food that we eat. And this is what hypernourishment basically represents. Hypernourishment basically means providing an abundance of materials, of raw resources, so of calories, vitamins, minerals, proteins, all of the different things that the body needs to function in an abundance so that it can just do all the work that it needs to do. We're providing it like the optimal space, like the perfect environment to heal. Because it knows how to heal and healing exists already. We just have to cultivate that environment around the body and the body will move into that place. So how do we do it? So I would look at it through a lens of, of two things. You've got micronutrients and macronutrients. We want to improve the micronutrient and macro macronutrient intake of the diet as much as possible so that we can just flood the body with all of the things that it needs to heal itself. So from a macronutrient perspective, you've got proteins, fats, and carbs. I know not everybody's ready for carbs wherever they're at in their stage of journey. And maybe you're not ready for fat either. You know, everybody's a little bit different. But if you can move towards trying to have all of these three things in your diet, the proteins, the fats, and the carbs, it is a game changer. It, it honestly, it is just it is insane. Like these are so these are two of these these like hacks, two of these superfoods. It actually is just carbs and fats. You know, if you have an abundance of carbs and fats in your diet, your body is provided with so much energy, so much. Think of, so. Think about a calorie, right? A calorie is the potential for energy. It's like it's energy stored in a chemical form, and healing takes energy. But healing is abundant. So if you want to heal, you need abundant energy. You need a lot of energy. Every single molecule that you detox, every single digestive enzyme that you produce, every single bile acid that you create, every single cell that your gut lining produces, every every single thing that happens in your body, every immune system that activates, every uh, every new cell that is born, it costs calories. Like every single thing costs calories. So having an abundance of calories means your body has the energy that it needs to do what it wants to do. From a micronutrient perspective, we've got two superfoods as well. And the, the best way to provide these micronutrients, it comes down to two things. If you do these two things, everything else is just, it is just, it's just crap. Like it's, it's, it's not even half as effective. You know, if you do these two things, nothing beats it. Honestly, nothing beats it. And this is, this is, the first one is juicing. The reason juicing it works so well here is any benefit that you can get from a plant or vegetable, you're getting it in the raw form with all of the irritating and indigestible fibers removed. So you concentrate all of that power. Anything that you get from raw fruits and vegetables, anything that you get from the plant kingdom that is of benefit to the human body, you get it 10 times the dose in juicing. And you remove a lot of the, the things that cause people problems, the fibers, the indigestible matter. And you, you concentrate it, it's 10 times more powerful. So if you can fit juicing in, even one glass of juice per week probably gives you more nutrients than in three or four days worth of, of standard meals. The amount, the concentrated quantity of nutrients is, is insane. 
and the other one that complements this. So you've got like, this is the nice vegan option, and then you've also got the carnivore option, you've got liver. Combine both of these together, you are, you're bulletproof, you're flawless. Like you cannot provide better nutrient, um, nutrient density to the body. Liver is not even on planet Earth compared to superfoods, you know? You've got like, you've got like blueberries, you've got acai berries, you've got cacao, coffee, you've got all your other superfoods here, and liver is here. It's up here, okay? It's, it is on a different level. It's not even comparable. You get all the bioavailable B complex vitamins, you get the, the vitamin, you get the folate, you get the B12, you're getting thiamine, you're getting all of the trace minerals. You get your copper, your zinc, all, like even the trace trace minerals. You're getting molybdenum, you're getting vanadium, you're getting chromium, you're getting all these little tiny ones as well. Especially if this is grass fed. And you really want grass fed liver because it, you can taste the difference. Honestly, it, it's, a, it's, it's a huge difference. So you really want grass fed liver. It tastes a lot better and you're going to get way more nutrients. You combine these four things together. You combine the fat soluble vitamins, so the vitamin A, the vitamin D, and the, the B complex vitamins and the trace minerals from the liver with the enzymes, with the minerals, with the other the vitamins, all of these plant based super powered foods that you get in juicing. Combine that with a calorie surplus coming from both carbohydrates for like quick burning energy and really nourishing those adrenal glands with fats in a, in a surplus so you can nourish your liver, your gallbladder, your digestive system, your brain, just having this, this surplus of energy, you know, this feeds your immune system, this feeds your nervous system, this feeds, this feeds your adrenal glands. Like having this surplus just creates safety for your body and it puts it in a state of, again, abundance, which is a state of healing and it will heal. And then you might say, yeah, but what if I eat so much that I start getting fat and what about, what about this? What about blood sugar dysregulation? Like these are all valid concerns. Gaining weight is actually not a problem because the more weight you gain, the more fasting you can do. And fasting, again, is is one of these, it's not coming from a place of restriction, it's coming from a place of abundance. It's coming from a place of, I have so much energy, my body is so restored, it's so regenerated, I can afford to not eat for an extended period of time and my body can go in and do the deep work, can do the deep cleaning, can figure out and finish all of these other jobs that it hasn't been able to complete that are holding me back from wellness. So fasting is actually a state of abundance as well especially if you're doing it from a state of previous calorie surplus. You know, that's kind of a prerequisite of, of fasting going well. So gaining excess weight, uh, fantastic. You know, the more weight you gain, the more you can fast. It's, it's a superpower in itself. And you, you'll, you'll know when it's the right time. You know, I used to fast with a very low body weight and my body really struggled. You know, I had blood pressure problems, blood sugar issues. I felt weak and tired and I felt really, oh, fasting was really hard. And I did a fast like a week ago since basically doubling my body weight, you know, I've got, I've got, I've got a bit of extra fat, you know, I've got some, I've got some, some calories to burn and, and that's okay. You know, that's actually an abundant state that my body wants to be in right now. And I did this fast, no blood pressure problems whatsoever. I could go from laying down to standing up with my hands above my head, no symptoms whatsoever, no shakiness, no issues. I was working. I felt great. I had energy. My mood was awesome. And I went for 36 hours and it was like the easiest thing in the world. It was incredible. It, it was really amazing to see how much difference it made fasting at a different body weight. So again, incorporating that energy of healing, the energy of that abundance in, in, into that. Weight gain, not a problem. Blood sugar problems. I find the biggest reason people have blood sugar issues is they're actually chronically stressed. If you have stress, Anytime you are releasing stress hormones, your body is going to mess with your blood sugar hormones, your insulin and all these things, they're all going to just, it's going to become a mess. So the single most uh, impactful thing that I, I see that you can do to improve your body's ability to tolerate carbohydrates and handle like blood sugar imbalances is actually to get on top of stress. And the single biggest stress I see people running into is not eating enough food and not having an abundance of nutrients not having these micronutrients and these macronutrients. When your body triggers a stress response, it's doing so because it's trying to adapt and survive. If your body doesn't have enough resources, so it doesn't have enough calories, it doesn't have enough micro and macronutrients, any stress that you experience, even a small stress, you know, someone getting in your way, someone inconveniencing you, it becomes a life or death level of stress. Your body says, we have this little stress, we don't have enough resources to handle it, we're gonna die. And you have a huge stress response. Blood sugars, 
all over the place. Absolute disaster, absolute mess. So one of the things that actually helped my blood sugars the most was adding carbs and adding them to a, a almost an absurd degree. When I when I had my breakthrough, when I when I healed all of my food intolerances, I went from eating about 3000 calories a day on a keto diet to about 7000 calories a day including carbs. And this was four this was like 4000 calories from carbs. That's like 1000 grams of carbs a day. And I'm not saying this is what everybody needs to do. But I was in a very underweight state. My body really needed this nourishment and providing it and having consistently provided this over a year or so my body is is just strong. Like I just feel it. You know, I can just like I'm out here. I'm I'm in the heat. This is this is hot. I can handle it. I can go in the cold. I can handle it. And I'm still not all the way yet there yet. You know, when you're really sick, it takes time to build back up. But if you can tune into that energy of abundance or that energy of healing, and one aspect of that is abundance, and provide that abundance to your body on a physical level, calorie surplus, fats and carbs, protein is important as well. I just didn't want to touch on it today because I mean everyone says protein is important. And it's a bit more controversial, like, oh, fat, carb, okay, fats and carbs, really important. That's where you get calories, that's what's really important. And your trace minerals, and your, your vitamins, your, like, liver and juicing. If you, if you do these things, so calorie surplus, coming from fats and carbs, you're doing juicing, and you're eating liver, like, twice a week, or you're taking liver pills, or you're getting liver in some way, on a physical level, you have, you have embraced physical abundance. Like, your body is being provided with everything on a physical level that it needs to be able to heal like you you, you just can't beat it and the, these are the shortcuts there's other ways to do it you know you might say okay oh, i can't do the liver like i'm histamine intolerant or i've got this sensitivity or, okay like there are other ways to do things you know i didn't tolerate liver initially either and instead i would supplement my diet with like 10 to 12 egg yolks a day there's a way around there's a way around it if you have food sensitivities and intolerances but the takeaway is if you can do these things you're crazy not to be doing them because there's nothing there's nothing else that works as well as it so if you can do it, great. If you can't, you can find a workaround. Viveka said, Viveka, lovely to, lovely to have you um, you here, Viveka. It's really nice to, to hear from you. You should uh, send me a little message and let me know how you're getting on. Viveka says, this is really good, William Dickinson. Fasting always sucks for me. Yeah, I, I've so been there. I, I totally get it. And I think that you, you can probably resonate. Like fasting on a lower body weight is... It's tough and you have really, it's harder. It's harder on your body and it's harder to, to stick through. Try doing it when you've got a bit of fat to, fat to lose. You know, you'll coast through it. It's like the easiest thing ever. And it's easier because your body's saying like, I like this, I can do this, this is helpful, this is healing. And you, you'll feel it, you know, you I, I, you know what feeling, what healing feels like. It feels good, it feels it feels right. And when you're embracing that energy, you'll, you'll just know, you'll just have a feeling. So that's everything for me today. I think Joanna's ready. I can see her bustling around over there. So I'm going to head out. Hyper nourishment is a, is a shortcut to just healing anything. You know, energy problems, um, chronic infections, adrenal fatigue, digestive issues, like whatever it is, whatever it is, hyper nourishment will help. In the last case, like in the worst case scenario, you gain the extra weight, you can fast more. You get access to another really powerful tool for healing. So you really can't go wrong with this. Calories in, calories out is like the stupidest idea that anybody ever made. If you're if you're trying to lose weight and you're also trying to heal, you have to you have to prioritize. Like, what do you want to do right now? Do you want to lose weight or do you want to heal? And I, I promise you, if you heal first, you will lose weight so easily. You know, I did I did like one or two fasts, and my body composition changed like an insane amount. Like the I didn't lose that much weight like to the scales, but if you're looking at my body, it completely recompositioned itself. So focus on the healing first, the weight loss will come after, and it doesn't come from calorie restriction. Like, trust me, that is like the stupidest idea ever. Don't do calorie restriction. You will just destroy your body. It really doesn't help you. It's not the abundance, the, the abundance energy that healing is. So prioritize, heal first, weight loss will come. It's, it, it really does. Your body doesn't want to be overweight. It wants to be in its natural state of perfect balance, and it will get there if you give it everything that it needs to get there. I hope you found it really helpful. Corinne says she's pulling her grass-fed liver out now. Golden star, you, you definitely get uh, five golden stars for that. Absolutely perfect. And Corinne says she needed this. Well, I'm glad that I just happened to tune in right now and, and be able to give this this video to, to you. So I hope you found this really helpful. Take care. Um, thanks, Natalie. Lovely to see you as well. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.